Hello, my name is Shauna Bellew. I'm an emergency medicine resident at the Mayo Clinic. and I'm going to be presenting right lower quadrant pain in a young woman. Now, I subtitle this Ic Sunt Ungulatus, or Here There Be the Hoofed Mammals. In light of the axiom, when you hear hoof beats, think horses. Now I thought about that and I thought, well, I don't really care that much about horses. You know, in emergency medicine, what I really need to think about is all of the different things that can cause hoof beats or a presentation but especially focus on the things that can cause a presentation that are life-threatening, that can cause morbidity or mortality. So I think of things like this guy. So this is a hippo. So hippos are dangerous and they're sneaky. And they, they're even, they even try to be cute. But they're not cute. They're 8,000 pounds of sheer aggression. They don't even need meat, and they're attacking crocodiles and lions. They run deceptively fast, and they kill about 3,000 people in a year. So with that in mind, let's move to our case. So our case is a 17-year-old obese female who woke with crampy right lower quadrant pain um, and experienced one episode of emesis prior to presenting to the emergency department. She denied being sexually active, any vaginal bleeding or discharge, or any other concerning symptoms. Now, the patient was vitally normal and found to have tenderness in the right lower quadrant on exam. She also had a positive hop test, meaning that when she was asked to hop up and down, that reproduced her pain. And she had a positive Rob Singh sign uh, with a negative psoas and obturator sign. Now, our differential in a female with lower abdominal pain is just incredibly broad. You know, female, we have these pest, pesky gynecologic organs that cause issues. We have to think about things like ectopic pregnancy, ovarian abscesses, uh, uterine fibroids, endometri endometritis, endometriosis, etc. But we really want to focus on the things in any patient that are likely and that are dangerous. So in this case, our hippos are appendicitis, uh, ectopic pregnancy, ovarian torsion, and tubo ovarian abscess. So these are the things that we're concerned about. Now our number one suspect being appendicitis, just playing the odds. Now looking at appendicitis, there's just a plethora of studies that have d looked at all the different historical physical exam and lab findings. And have found that, you know, there's not really a single uh, feature that you can use to exclude appendicitis. And in fact, some of these meta-analyses have shown none of them are even that discriminatory. Now what does seem to be helpful is the presence of migratory pain, uh, pain in the right lower quadrant, and some will also say vomiting, particularly um, after the onset of pain. Um, the absence of tenderness actually is pretty good with a negative likelihood ratio of 0 0.1, which rivals a negative CT scan. On the other hand, if your consulting service says something like, they can't have appendicitis, they don't have a white count, well, 20% of them still can. Uh, negative predictive value is only 80%. And if you find that the patient does have something called cervical motion tenderness that apparently we only have about 17% agreement on, um, don't hang your hat on that. 30% of them can still have appendicitis too. So how are we going to make this diagnosis? So back in the day, a lot of the time they would just do surgery. And the rate of what they call a non-therapeutic appendectomy at that time was about 35%. Now we have other modalities, and in a female young patient like this, the recommendation would probably be to move to ultrasound first. So the problem with that is that a larger patient is going to have trouble having especially a transabdominal ultrasound. And in about 70% of cases, no appendix is visualized, which you can't really use to rule out appendicitis. Now, CT, on the other hand, is quite sensitive and specific. The problem is the radiation and also patients with limited fat um, have a decreased sensitivity of their uh, CT scan. Notably, you can do a limited scan to only the right lower quadrant, uh, which can be a solution for some of those radiation issues. Now, in our patient, we did do an ultrasound first, and we found a large anechoic mass in the right adnexa, and the appendix was, of course, not visualized. Uh, what they did say is they could not rule out torsion, uh, so they did recommend a CT scan. So then a CT scan was done, which showed a large ovarian mass, um, again, concerning for torsion, possibly. It was not definitive. So ovarian cysts are a common cause of abdominal pain in females, and it's normal to have ovarian cysts uh, that are less than 3 centimeters. When they're larger than that, they're considered pathologic. 
Follicular cysts are most common and predominant in the first part of the cycle, with luteal cysts being more common in the second. Now ovarian torsion um, is essentially a twisting of the ovary that happens most commonly in patients that do have an enlarged cyst or mass greater than 5 centimeters. It's actually more common on the right. Now the ovary has a dual blood supply from the ovarian artery and the uterine artery. And for that reason, it doesn't usually lose flow. Um, so when people will say time is ovary, time is brain, time is heart, um, time is testicle, but time is ovary is not completely true. There's actually been patients that have had uh, days of symptoms um, without losing fertility. Now, for the same reason, uh, our diagnostic study of ultrasound, which is the test of choice, is not as sensitive as like, for example, testicular torsion, uh, because you can't really use Doppler. Doppler will only be abnormal in about 44% of these patients because they maintain flow. So what the most sensitive is is just enlargement of the ovary. So you're actually looking for the thing that caused the torsion as opposed to the torsion itself. Um, and with that in mind, a CT scan is actually fairly sensitive as well if all you're looking for is an enlargement of the ovary. The CT scan is not so good at actually seeing the torsion itself, but as I mentioned, that's not such a good sign. So in conclusion, our patient underwent laparotomy and had her cyst removed. Uh, it was found to be benign and her ovary was retained, so it was a good outcome. So in conclusion, uh, Appendicitis, hard to diagnose, common. Ovarian torsion, very, very hard to diagnose, um, less common, but should also be in the differential.